I used to run a women's and queers night at a local arts work. I met this person through this named Sabrina. We became really good friends. Honestly, so much of our friendship was really great. We both really loved electronics and we really talked about it a lot. At the time, she had another very good friend. They were inseparable. At one point, she ends up moving in with this friend. Quickly, it goes downhill and I spend more and more time with Sabrina. I hear that her old friend slash roommate was really awful in all kinds of irrational ways. It sounded like a really crappy situation. Me and Sabrina get very close. I'm in a really committed long-term relationship with someone else named John. Me and Sabrina end up going on lots of trips together, and at one point Sabrina's computer breaks and I give her my old one. I didn't clear it because she's very computer savvy and I didn't really think much of it. Surely she'd clear it herself, right? At one point in our relationship, John and I decided to have an open relationship. Sabrina says that she likes me and that we should date. I say no. I care about her very much, but I don't want to date her. We get into a pretty big argument, one of many. We always have lots of fights every time I meet men and date them, and she's pretty critical. We talk it over, and I decide not to share that aspect of my life with her anymore. Sabrina moves into my best friend's house, and everything is mostly fine. Mostly. It's really weird, but she doesn't ever speak to any of the other roommates. Like, not a single word to any of them. One day, Sabrina isn't answering me on Messenger, and I know she's been sick. I have my best friend check on her, and she says that she's okay. More time passes, and I go over to check on her. She has diabetes, and she's very, very sick. I call an ambulance, and we go to the hospital. She's having some kind of issue relating to her diabetes. I miss a big talk that I was supposed to give spending the night with her in the hospital, so she's not alone. But not a big deal. She's my friend, and she was really in need that night. As time continues, we have some more bizarre fights, but I just assume that they're largely misunderstandings. Some about the people I date, how I use my time, etc. Sabrina House sits for me, confides secrets in me, and we hang out pretty often, despite the occasional disagreements. I'm a PhD student, so at one point at the end of the winter semester, I had to take some time on my own to finish my work. I didn't really notice the distance growing, but it had been about a week since we'd seen each other. When I'm buried in my work, I really need my whole brain. She seemed sad, so I suggest that she hang out with some of the other mutual friends that we had. Well, she declines. She says that she needs to see me and that she really needs her best friend. I start to feel like I have to be her whole world, a feeling I've had before but just dismissed. This time, I feel pretty uncomfortable about it, and I try to set some boundaries between us. We have this odd sort of push and pull interaction for a few months following this. She starts ignoring me and then sending me messages or being distant if I ever reach out to her. At one point, I suggest that she hangs out with me along with a group of friends, and she goes off on me, saying, You know I hate them. Why are you trying to make this so difficult for me? I'm very stressed out in general, and I'm actually going to therapy to deal with it. I start to feel really paranoid and just kind of assume it's stress-induced. Eventually, Sabrina messages me on Facebook, and she says that we need to talk. I agree, and she says that she discovered what's wrong with her. She basically tells me that I'm all she thinks about, and she's absolutely obsessed with me, and it's destroying her. She says that I can't interact with her, that hello is way too much. She asks me to completely disengage with her completely. I'm honestly really baffled, but I agree to try. It's really kind of difficult to do that because she lives with my best friend and is a member of the studio I ran. Something in the back of my brain tells me to check my computer logs, so I do. I find out that Sabrina has been logging into my Google account for one and a half years. I see your device is currently logged on. If you don't know, you can look at your Google account and see all of the logged in devices. I saw Sabrina's laptop logged in within the last few days, and it said active. I checked the last activity and saw find my device. 
You can also check this on your Google account as well. I've never used this feature personally as I really had no reason to do so. I use Google Activity to check. I'm a pretty meticulous Google Cow Calendar keeper, so I'm able to easily cross-reference just about everything. I can see that she's been using Google Timeline and find my device on me every single time that I was out on a date with John or anyone else, or if I was out with someone she didn't know. She had access to all of my photos and videos as well as my chat logs. I can see that she's been checking them. Every photo, where I was, who I was with, what I was saying, etc. I decide to contact a good friend of mine who's very tech savvy to make sure that it couldn't be an accident, and there's no way that it could be. I realized that my stress-induced paranoia was in fact because some part of my brain just knew something was wrong. I can think of multiple incidents that are really huge red flags now. One time I was on a date and she messaged me. You're in the park, I'm going to come get you, and I just somehow let it slide because I was stupid. I just said, uh, what? No, I'm having a good time here. I can also see that she never used Find My Device when I was home, indicating that she was reading my chat logs or had some other way of knowing where I was. I was also able to correlate her hospital stay with the day that she was tracking me, and I know for a fact that a lot of diabetic issues can be self-induced. I can see now that so many of the fights we had or things that I missed because of her issues were also during times that she was tracking me. All of our arguments about my time and my dating life seemed very clear to me now. I actually find out later that apparently her old roommate had similar issues with her. She was always really worried that Sabrina had put something on their Wi-Fi network or that she was following her, and that's why their relationship decayed so much. Eventually, all of this comes to light between all of our friends. She says that she did this because I made her responsible for my safety, which is absolutely insane. She had also told people that one of the reasons she was following me was because I made her my servant. I mean, what? I feel so messed up from all of this. I realized through correlating journals, calendars, and Google activity logs that she had been fighting with me when I was having intimate conversations with men, or when I was out with people she didn't know. I feel like my stress-induced paranoia was really just my brain knowing that something was going on. While most of her stalking me was while I was on dates, a lot of it was when I was just out with some of my old friends that she didn't know. For example, she used Find My Device when I was at Medieval Times with a childhood friend and didn't tell her. If I had made her my servant or responsible for my safety, I certainly wasn't in any kind of danger in situations like that. I feel like I'm kind of ripe for this type of thing. I'm very forgiving, especially if I think someone is struggling with something, so I excuse so many red flags. I once saw that she had Twitter notifications for my posts on her phone. I always heard it buzz when I posted. I felt really uncomfortable, but I just let it slide and joked about it. That was really dumb of me. It was clearly a sign, I just didn't realize it could actually be this bad. If you see a red flag or you feel paranoid, maybe check crap out. I don't know, I just wanted to get that off my chest. I'm also really glad that I'm a huge Google Calendar user, which let me build a case in order to prove that it was actually happening. I'm really grateful for that. And Sabrina, wherever you are and whatever you're up to, I really hope you get some help for your really concerning behavior. You really need it. This happened a few years ago. During my sophomore year of college, I suddenly had to switch dorms due to housing and residence life at my university being completely awful to me and a few other student workers. Long story short, I lost my job and I actually had to move within a day. My parents came five states away and made a huge fuss in the housing office so that I was able to get more moving time. This is really important later in the story. I used to go on Instagram Live a lot because I'm a music minor and practicing in front of an audience really helps me improve my piano skills. I guess Instagram had begun offering the feature of showing stories and lives on the Explore page, so I ended up getting a lot of views and comments from strangers. Nothing too bad, 
It was usually just song requests that I couldn't fulfill because I had a strict repertoire from my piano professor or hard eyes from strangers. I used to really enjoy the lives until I got a comment from a man who knew exactly the location of my university. I never wore any kind of school attire during my lives or publicized my location on Instagram, so it made me a little nervous. I stopped doing lives after that for a while, getting caught up in regular work and figured everything was fine. The guy sent me a few messages offering to take me on a date. A quick scan of his profile made it clear that he was at least 50 years old. He worked as a laborer for the city my university is located near. He asked me several times a day what buildings my classes were in, if I liked the cafeteria, etc. Until I finally got scared and decided to block him. However, before I blocked him, I called him a pervert and a freaking weirdo for being so interested in me when I was so much younger than him, and for also trying to find me when I was trying to go to class. A few weeks later, after I had forgotten about his weird messages, I got a message from him saying something along the lines of, I waited for you in front of your old dorm for hours, but you never showed. Did you go home for the weekend? You shouldn't be so rude to me next time or else we won't have fun whenever we meet face to face. That message scared me more than I'd ever been scared in my life. One of my really close friends graduated from the university and began working as a campus police officer around the same time that this all happened. So I decided to go see her and see what I could do. Sadly, not much could really be done about it, but I definitely pulled back on my social media presence. The guy had followed me from two more Instagram accounts with different usernames, and I blocked all of them before he could even message me. Thankfully, since leaving after that spring semester, I haven't heard from him since. So to the creepy old guy from Instagram that wouldn't leave me alone, I really hope I don't hear from you ever again. Before I get into this, yes, I know I was really dumb. I know that there were millions of times that I probably could have walked away, but didn't. I was kind of stumbered and that often got me into bad situations online. For a little bit of context, at the time I was suffering from a few undiagnosed mental illnesses, with depression, anxiety, and light psychotic symptoms being a few of them. I also had a very tense childhood, so I had a lot of trouble making friends at school. That being said, I was a pretty lonely kid so I went and still go to the internet for friendship and attention. In seventh grade, I had a not so popular Tumblr blog. At the time, there was this movie that I really liked. It was a crappy action movie. The fan base for it was pretty small and I was super obsessed with it, so whenever I happened upon someone else who also liked it, I would always share their posts and DM them to discuss the movie. I met this guy who I'll call Tom this way. I DM'd him and immediately he struck me as strange. He typed in a very cheery way for a lack of a better term. He was also immediately very affectionate. It struck me as weird but I knew that a lot of the people who posted about that movie on Tumblr were from different countries, so I figured it was probably just a language barrier. We talked on and off for the next few months. During this time, he had actually disclosed to me a few personal problems that he had. He said that he felt like no one liked him and that he was sad all the time and he felt like the only person that was there for him was me. I never felt insanely responsible for other people's well-being over the internet when I didn't really know them that well. So I basically just said something along the lines of, Oh, thank you. I'm really glad I can help. And I tried to recommend to him to go see a therapist. There were a few other things that caught me a bit off guard. Like this one time where he sent me a link to a roleplay blog that he had made for some animal OC. For the record, I don't roleplay. I checked out the blog expecting some sort of joke, and then Tom proceeded to, in character, say how he wants to give me all of his love and that I'm really cute. I kind of played it off and didn't really think too much into it. I had tried to distance myself a little bit more because, honestly, he was kind of a nuisance. It was beginning to become a chore to message him. One time he had called me some pet names like he usually did, and I went ahead and asked him how old he was. He said that he was 19. I told him that I'm 13 and I'd really appreciate it if he stopped calling me pet names and talking to me so affectionately. 
He told me that he was sorry and that he really didn't mean to make me uncomfortable. I said it was okay, but I was already thinking about asking some of my friends if this seemed normal. Long story short, a few of my friends didn't really think it was normal. I ended up blocking Tom and posting a long angry warning post all about him. A little while after I unblocked Tom though, another account who I'll call Ryan followed me. I didn't really think a lot of it at the time. By this time I was in 8th grade and I had about a thousand followers on a pretty tense side of Tumblr. I mean, I got weird followers all the time. I did check out his blog though, and being the snoop that I am, I checked out his likes and follow list. To my surprise, he had only liked from and followed me. He had pages of my posts in his like section and I started to get a little worried. I sent him a message and then explained. Hey, so this is probably nothing, but I'm a bit of a paranoid person. Can I ask you why you've only interacted with me on this site? I'm just curious. I remember his first response to this was, Don't worry about me. I'm a good boy. Which definitely set me off guard, but I still kept persisting. I tried to ask him if he maybe had a previous account or any other social media presence so I could just make sure that he wasn't a creep. He had gave short replies saying that stating his past account names gave him anxiety. I started to get a little more aggressive in the conversation and then posted about it publicly. As the conversation was going on, he was liking and replying to these posts as well, saying things like he just wanted to talk to me. I really had enough so I ended up blocking him and then writing him off as some internet illiterate weirdo. A couple of months later, my aunt died. It was a really rough time for me. I posted about it on my blog because that was really the only place that I feel like I could vent about it without being disrespectful, because I had been less than nice to my aunt in the recent years. Pretty much immediately after I was vocal about that, I started to get a lot of anonymous hate mail. It started out simple. It was loads of paragraphs about not liking my personality and how I was judgmental, which wasn't entirely wrong. And there were a lot of people that I'd gotten in a drama with who had plenty of reason to hold a grudge against me. So I wrote it off and responded jokingly, saying something to the effect of screw off. It really wasn't a big deal at first. I really thought it was all jokes until the mail started getting more and more aggressive. At this point in the story, I should probably clarify that I'm a bisexual transgender man with some kind of neurodiversity. I started getting piles of mail calling me the FT and R slur. The comments had also got vaguely sexual as time went on and this made me really nervous. Eventually I stopped replying to these altogether, realizing that this really wasn't a joke anymore. I later got an ask that was extremely sexual. It was about a paragraph long and it detailed how the sender had some kind of fantasy of me essentially being the dominant in a DDLG relationship, dressing up the sender and them calling me daddy. This ask sent me over the edge and I started to totally freak out about it. I ended up remaking my blog after I rigorously installed stat counters on all of my online accounts. I was really nervous but I still wasn't aware of the gravity of the situation. I had said to my followers on a previous blog that they'd have to message me to find my new one. I checked my DMs to see if any of the friends were asking and I saw a DM from a Hello Kitty themed blog. It was mostly empty with a few pictures of some pink dresses and candies on it. The blog was asking if they could find my new blog. I declined politely because I didn't know them. I went to check and see if they were a game account made to find my new blog. And sure enough, that blog had only been created for about an hour before they messaged me. At this point, it really started to sink in that I was being stalked online. I woke up the next morning to a message from the Hello Kitty themed blog telling me that he, Ryan, had found my new blog and that he wanted me to off myself. I decided to check my DMs on my previous blog and I saw two messages that read, Fine, don't give it to me then. I panicked and moved blogs yet again. He kept finding me over and over, I assumed through friends. I could see on my stat counter that he'd stay on my blog for about 10 and 20 hours at a time, just scrolling through the pages. I think that he knew that I had a counter too, because he always made sure to visit certain more personal posts that I had made. One that I remember specifically was one where I was mentioning my huge fear of needles. 
There was also another time where he joined a small Discord server that I was a part of. Fortunately, my friends were able to spot how secretive he was being and then banned him. We later found out that the account was brand new, only made about 15 minutes before joining the server. Up until this point, I didn't mention anything to anyone I knew in real life. I was just way too embarrassed. I actually became convinced that I was going to get murdered by this guy. It felt like a certainty to me. I started giving up on life plans because I thought that I'd be dead in about a year or so tops. Sometimes at night I would barricade the doors and windows with any of the furniture I could move and just lay there wide awake. The whole ordeal decreased my mood significantly and no one seemed to care. My grandparents told me that it wasn't really a big deal and that I shouldn't be online anyways. Just about all of the adults that I told about this pretty much just told me to ignore him. My mom was the only one who believed me, but even she had a limit with just how much she could tolerate my paranoia. I ended up deciding to report Ryan to the police, assuming he was in the States. I decided to look up laws about cyber stalking in my state and began compelling a report of everything that had happened up until that point, including screenshots. I mustered up the courage to tell him to stop contacting me and accessing my blog. He never responded to these outright. His obsessive viewing still lingered for a while though, then slowly it started to happen less frequently. It was mostly over at that point. I felt a huge relief when I realized he wasn't looking over my shoulder anymore at every hour now. I never ended up reporting him to the police because the situation had died down. Later on though, I got really angry and curious and decided to try one last deep dive to find out who this guy really was. I had a really big hunch that he was Tom from earlier, who was really offended because I didn't return his affection. I ended up finding his deviant art. On his deviant art, he had posted a lot of art and writing about the mutilation of women and children. Not just 17 or 18 year old teenagers, but 6 and 10 year old children. When I went on his Twitter, I saw that he was obsessive over a six-year-old girl from the anime Zatch Bell. He talked about how much of a virgin she was and just how much that he wanted to have sex with her. He also got really defensive when anyone implied that no, a six-year-old anime girl is not going to have sex with you. He was also pretty aggressive and he apparently had a few accounts that had been taken down for harassment. I also found out that his IP was actually banned on two servers for that same reason. To this day, I still look over my shoulder, both online and in real life, wondering if Ryan or Tom or whatever would be there. I've honestly considered reporting him to Interpol since he lives in Spain, but I've decided that nothing will probably come of it. So Ryan or Tom or whoever you really are, I really hope that I never encounter you online ever again. Okay, so this happened about four years ago when I was 16. I was super vain and really worried about my appearance. I always wanted to look so pretty, so I would go all out whenever I went out or took pictures. Curled hair, fake lashes, you know, the whole nine yards. But I've since had kids and have a man who tells me I'm beautiful when I look like a hobo and never bother with makeup or anything anymore. Anyways, I had my Snapchat account set to public so anyone could watch my stories or snap me. I always figured, well, if someone's weird or something, I can just block them. Yeah, right. Well, one day I'm out to lunch with my mom when this random dude sends me a message. He says I'm so pretty and this and that and being super nice, but I don't really care to talk to him so I'm just giving him one word replies, hoping he'll get the hint because I honestly really hate being rude. Then he asks if I'll send him nudes. Absolutely not, and I tell him so. Well, he didn't really like that. He told me I was a hoe and that he hated women because they're all a bunch of sluts and I'm just mad because no one likes me. Yeah, okay. I told him he was a psycho and then laughed at him and he threatened to sue me for defamation. Yeah, right. So anyways, I thought that was the end of it. Well, it wasn't. I block the dude and go about my day like normal when someone adds me on Snapchat. I looked at the user info and their snap score was a zero. 
Their username was also something really weird. They don't send me any snaps or anything, but continue to watch my stories every single day. Fast forward a few months and this person snaps me. I was doing the same one word replies because I didn't really feel like talking. You'd really think that I'd learn the first time, but nope. He starts with a nice small talk whatever and then out of nowhere he sends me a couple of different selfies of myself that were posted in my story months ago. He asks if I can print them out for him and gives me the sizes that he wants them in and then he tells me he'll give me his address to send them to. Hold up, what? I immediately shut it down, then the unthinkable happens. The guy sends me a couple of pictures of myself actually framed in his house on his wall. Oh hell no. I told him off real good and then I blocked him. Not too long after that, I get another random account that adds me. Another weird username. I then remove it and change my account settings. He still has my user, so he adds me from a million different accounts which I won't add back. They were all super weird usernames. I won't give the actual usernames, but on Snapchat you can choose a display name, and all these were pretty similar to the usernames. One was I'm wet, and the other one was just add me back. Snapchat also tells you how the person added you, whether it's by phone number or user search or quick add. Every single one of them said user search, so I know for a fact he searched it up. Every single account had a snap score of zero, so obviously they had just made the account. I just know it was him. So to the weirdo creeper who keeps adding my Snapchat years later because I won't send him nudes, you really need to take a hint already. Just leave me alone.